Thousands of Imperial Star Destroyers were built in the years of the Galactic Empire. Few approached the level of infamy of Vader's flagship, the Devastator. The only Star Destroyer to match it was the Chimera, the flagship of Grand Admiral Thrawn. With its namesake monstrosity painted on its underside, the Chimera instilled terror in the hearts of anyone who saw it overhead. In this week's video, we will take a look at the history and specifications of this frightening machine. I'm Joey from Radio Free Coruscant, and this is the Chimera. Ahsoka Tano, allow me to commend you on your efforts today. You've been quite a worthy opponent. Today, victory is mine. Long live the Empire. Specifications The Chimera was a largely standard Imperial One class Star Destroyer. I've already covered the specifications of this class in my video on the Devastator, so I'll just skim them for now. The Chimera was 1600 meters long by 900 meters wide. It was armed with 60 heavy turbo laser batteries, 60 ion cannons, and 6 heavy dual turbo laser turrets in Ahsoka, or 6 octuple turbo laser turrets in Star Wars Rebels, thanks to a continuity error. As an Imperial One, it was supposed to have the heavy dual turrets, but Rebels depicted it with the octuple turrets of the Imperial Two class Star Destroyer. In both depictions, it also had two dual heavy ion cannons, two quad heavy turbo lasers, three triple medium turbo lasers, two single medium turbo lasers, and ten tractor beam projectors. It could carry a total of 72 TIE fighters, plus shuttles, LAAT gunships, and more in its hangar. It had a crew of over 46,786 people, including the Grand Admiral. It was capable of atmospheric speeds up to 975 kilometers per hour, or 605 miles per hour. History the Chimera was put under then-Commodore Thrawn's command during the early days of the Rebellion. What set the Chimera apart from other ISDs other than her commander was the painting of a Chimera on her underside. A Chimera in Star Wars was a three-headed, many-limbed creature found on the planet Rapak. During Thrawn's service to the Republic, he was gifted a ring bearing an emblem of a Chimera by a Pakosh leader there, who had the emblem on his ship as well. When Thrawn was gifted the command of a Star Destroyer, he named it the Chimera and had the hull painted with artwork inspired by the ring gifted to him so many years ago. The Seventh Fleet, which Thrawn would later command, was represented by the emblem from the ring as well. Thrawn quickly put the ship to work. He used it to quell early uprisings and hunt down early rebel leaders. One of the biggest operations of their early days was the Battle of Botajef, where the governor of Botajef declared the planet independent from the Empire and the Chimera was among the ships dispatched to reclaim it. After this battle, Thrawn was promoted to the rank of Admiral and placed in charge of the 96th Task Force. He kept the Chimera as his flagship. His former first officer, Karen Farrow, was promoted to the Chimera's captain and his friend and protege, Eli Vanto, became its new first officer. The Chimera in this configuration continued to play a key role in many battles, such as the battles of Salmon, Scrim Island, and Bataan. Thrawn was commended for his actions at Bataan, even though he personally disapproved of the large number of civilian casualties. Despite this, he was promoted to Grand Admiral and placed in command of the 7th Fleet. The Chimera remained his flagship. In 2 BBY, Governor Erhinda Price of Lothal deduced that rebel activity on her planet was connected to other nearby rebel cells and called for Thrawn to aid in defeating them. He obliged and brought the Chimera and the 7th Fleet there. He conducted several operations to slowly narrow down the location of the rebel base until finally settling on Adalon. Taking the 7th Fleet and the Chimera to the planet, they obliterated the rebel forces there with only a handful of ships managing to escape thanks to a costly mistake by Admiral Constantine. Following the Battle of Adalon, Thrawn and the Chimera ferried Darth Vader to the planet Batuu, where they discovered a grisk plot to move the nearby planet Mokiv's moons 
into a hyperspace lane, which the Chimera put a swift end to. Shortly after this, the Chimera returned to Lothal. It protected Thrawn's TIE Defender factory from a rebel attack, and then took him to Coruscant to petition the Emperor for funding for the TIE Defender project. Unfortunately, in his absence, Governor Price accidentally destroyed the Lothal City fuel depot in her pursuit of the rebels, which Thrawn needed to power his TIEs. Thrawn and the Chimera returned to the Lothal just in time to discover that the rebels had captured the Imperial complex in Lothal City and were planning to launch it into space. He demanded that they surrender, but when they revealed that they had all the Imperial personnel on Lothal held hostage in the complex, he began bombarding the capital city. Meanwhile, Ezra Bridger began infiltrating the Chimera and working his way to the bridge. The rebels used the complex's shields to protect the city from the bombardment and called a pod of Pergil using a special radio frequency. These Pergil destroyed two of the Star Destroyers and latched onto the Chimera, dragging it, Thrawn, and Ezra to a planet named Peridia in a distant galaxy. And remember, the Force will be with you. Always. There, the badly damaged Chimera formed Thrawn's base of operations for about ten years. During that time, he became acquainted with powerful Night Sisters called the Great Mothers. They contacted a Night Sister named Morgan Elsbeth for him, who began constructing an immense hyperspace ring to bring him home, the Eye of Sion. They also provided Thrawn with some of the gold material that Morgan was using to build the Eye so that he could patch up the Chimera. Around 10 ABY, the Eye was completed and flown to Peridia. Upon seeing proof that Thrawn could make good on his end of the bargain, the Great Mothers gave him permission to begin loading their cargo into the Chimera. After this was complete, the ship docked with the Eye of Sion and fled Peridia, narrowly avoiding being boarded by Ahsoka Tano and Sabine Wren who had come to prevent Thrawn's return. It did not avoid being boarded once more by Ezra Bridger, however, who stole a shuttle from its hangar to return home. The last we have seen of the Chimera so far was its arrival at Dathomir to deliver the Night Sisters and their cargo. The Chimera is possibly the coolest Star Destroyer in all of Star Wars, and it's very exciting to see it in live action in Ahsoka. I'll leave you with a couple of questions. Do you think the Chimera will appear in The Mandalorian Season 4, or will we have to wait for Ahsoka Season 2 or even Filoni's movie to see it again? And when we do, do you think it will be repaired and separated from the Eye of Sion, or is the Eye a part of it now? Personally, I think that would be a really cool possibility, making it into a literal Chimera. A Chimera in real-world mythology is a creature composed of two separate creatures fused together, which perfectly describes the combined Chimera and Eye of Sion. Let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, be sure to subscribe to hear more about it when the time comes. I'll see you next week. RFC out.